gnomes are real. You know what? So are fairies and mermaids and other manifestations like that that we see in our fairy tales in our storybooks. Gnomes are real. Welcome to the Charmed Life Podcast. It's Trisha Carr, your host and your intuitive, your empathic channel, your hypnotherapist. I am here to be all things to everyone who shows up here. And I will also say that I am an animal and nature telepath. And this episode draws upon that experience and that skill. And then, yes, actually connecting psychically, connecting intuitively. Uh, telepathically channeling, connecting with spirit, the universe, whatever you want to call it, energy healing, it is a skill as well as a talent, as well as a creative experience, uh, meaning like artistic as well. So um, now I'm going to dig into something uh, I think is probably a little bit fun and it falls in the realm of both metaphysics, but also the realm of mysticism. And I love to improve my life and, and help others to improve their lives by uh, the use of understanding metaphysical philosophy and the art of mysticism. So I'm going to tell you today that gnomes are real. You know what? So are fairies and mermaids and other manifestations like that that we see in our fairy tales in our storybooks. Gnomes are real. And I'll tell you how I experienced my gnome guide, and everyone has these elemental spirit guides. Uh, how I first experienced my gnome guide, I didn't know that gnomes were real. I hadn't, I had no inkling. I'd never heard of anyone talk about gnomes as though they were actually real kinds of beings or spirits or entities. I had an experience with a gnome guide spontaneously. The It's a, kind of a, a sudden channeling of the experience, but this guide, this being of um, in the spirit realm approached me. And I, I don't recall even if I had, I'm pretty sure I didn't even know that fairies were real, honestly. I uh, So how it actually happened to me was I was in my um, almost, I guess you want to call it apprenticeship with animal communication, meaning, I mean, my self-imposed apprenticeship. I was I was uh, in development circles and I was practicing my and, and developing a skill of animal communication. And so I had an appointment with a person who was a, a fellow student in a mediumship development class. And she had, uh, I remember she had many animals. She had a cat. She had uh, two birds at the time, I believe, two parrots. I remember one I spoke with. And she also had a tortoise named Maury. Now, some of you may have heard this experience, this uh, yeah, this story before, so I'm not going to go into the details of it. But I communicated with Maury the tortoise, and we were we communicated over the phone. Um, and so, you know, my friend and you know fellow student. She, uh, you know, she presented Maury to me, you know, after I talked to her, a couple of other of her other animals and said, well, Maury is hibernating now. Can you communicate with a hibernating tortoise? And I was like, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> Never communicated with a tortoise, let alone one that's hibernating. Indeed, I did communicate with Maury and we had an evidential experience. And Maury explained to me how he has had many lives with his human as different kinds of, well, one thing he showed me was actually as a stone, like as this big stone that, and he, and the, his human was someone who would, who had this special like place to journal and meditate against the stone that he was. And I'm like, mind blown, didn't know that was a possibility. And then also he showed me almost like a flip picture book of like a salamander and, you know, these different kinds, snake and different kinds of animals who dwell really close to the earth. I mean, salamander, they, they dwell in, in fire as well. But anyway, he, uh, he he showed me this and he explained, yes, this is the the way that my soul expresses itself because I have a great passion for the element of earth. Okay, sounds cool. So we're all into the earth and he was explaining to me different densities, even though I didn't know that word and talking about how he just really loves that. uh, He loves to manifest as this lower octave second density slash first density. So it's like really proximate to the earth and, you know, how the earth element performs and behaves and what it does. And I'm Wow, cool. You can learn a lot from a hibernating tortoise. That was the one thing that I discovered. So then he um, also 
you know, he just told us some other things about their life and and it was a really beautiful experience. Well, the next morning while I'm meditating, by the way, I was meditating outside against a tree and as I'm sitting there and my eyes are closed, I'm in my experience, I felt very viscerally uh, an entity walk up and I felt it to be a certain like small stature. And in my mind's eye, in my clairvoyance, I saw this gnome, you know, like a, a, a fairy tale book wearing the suspenders and the red hat and the green britches and everything. And I was like, cool, it's a gnome, whatever. You know, I didn't I didn't think anything wild or weird of it. I accepted everything that I was exploring in my meditation because I know that archetypes can be very helpful to us. And I'll get to that in just a moment, too. So I was asking this gnome if he had a message for me, if he wanted to communicate something to me. And I had this masculine energy. And I just kept getting this resonance, this like peace, this calm, this, I mean, it was, it was something that it was not like a message in language or something I could really translate as I'm not doing (laughs) right now, I'm not doing a good job of it. And so I just was getting this kind of frequency and it was really lovely. And it was, it just felt so beautiful and so peaceful and well, grounding. And then I did ask if there was a name that I could use between us so that I could recall our connection. And I heard the name Henry and I saw it spelled in my mind's eye with an I, like the French spelling Henri. <laughs> and so I'm like, cool, Henry the gnome, whatever. And then three more days without me like really seeking, up comes Henry the gnome. Same experience. Do you have a message for me? And it was this frequency, it was this resonance. And it was so beautiful. Well, then my curiosity was piqued and I thought, what the heck? I'll take to Google. And so I Googled and found out that indeed metaphysicians and mystics have been connecting with gnomes as well as fairy folk or fae folk, as well as um, sylphs, undimes, salamanders, all of these other kinds of um, devas or the overarching entities or beings, they they oversee the different elements. And it was actually Paracelsus who kind of coined the system of it being gnomes, undine, sylphs, and salamanders. And if you guys are like, what are you talking about? Those are the other four elements. But I'm just focusing on gnomes and the earth element. And that gnomes are the real overarching devas, overseers, the managers, basically, of the earth element. Three, the day after Maury talked, gave me a big old lecture about the earth ele- element of the earth and what it's like to be resonating with that element. And then, you know, here comes my gnome guide. And so then I, 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 you know, I'm connecting with my gnome guide and it's Henry's always been there. And I don't know if it's because I have a Capricorn moon or what. But I get all gushy good feeling with gnomes and with earth element and with just the element of earth in general. So, um, you know, I love the earth, meaning like Gaia, meaning the planet. I love the I love earth, too. You know what I mean? Don't you love the smell of moist soil? Maybe you're thinking I'm crazy. I actually was out today on a run and I was getting all dirt all because I'm dusty desert, Southern California, and it's hot. And it's been dry and I'm getting dirt all inside my shoes. And I had to sit down for a moment because I was tired and I had dirt all over my hands and everything. And I was like, I like this. I like to be dirty. And then I thought, well, I mean, real properly covered in dirt, not (laughs) I don't like to be filthy or like, you know, with stuff that's like putrid or something, but dirt, beautiful, pure dirt. I like it. (laughs) So maybe again, maybe you're just thinking like, oh, that girl crazy. I don't know. I like it. I like dirt. I like the earth. So anyway, let me tell you how you can connect with your gnome guide. So first first point is, yes, you have a gnome guide. You have a gnome guide who oversees the earth element, and it's sort of like a master guide who works with you your whole life. Whether you connect with them in a cognitive, you know, way where you actually are, you know it or not, and whether a person is some specific religion that wouldn't include that or a complete atheist that wouldn't include that doesn't matter because it is a benevolent being, it is a benevolent energy entity that is working in this creation process with you as your partner. And benevolent, yes, they don't care if they're recognized or not, but they are available if they want, if you want to have an open communion with them. 
So that's the first thing to know, as well as the other three elements of the four physical elements, but we're just focusing on gnomes. This uh, idea of the gnomes with their, you know, kind of their pants and their, you know, their suspenders and their hat. I mean, they don't really have bodies, but that's the kind of energy that they convey. That's a human concept anthropomorphizing and making it into something that we, if this energy could be human, this is what it looks like or feels like or kind of represents. So you know what I mean? Like they aren't physical. They are composed of one, two, or three elements. Uh, gnomes are really, I mean, in so far as in the nature spirit realm, but a, a pure gnome, an overarching deva gnome, would be just composed of the element earth. And so they aren't on the same physical visual light spectrum as we are, and our eyes are trained to tune out, our, all of our per physical perceivers are trained to tune out things that are, are not on the physical light spectrum that we are engaged in, nor the sound spectrum, which is why, step one, we have to be in our meditation. We have to be in state, self-hypnosis, state, whatever it is. So we go into meditation with an open heart, with a calm demeanor, without demand, and as a matter of fact, with a pleasant and um, unconditional expectation for a positive connection, accepting everything that comes through. So I go into meditation. And I am intending to connect with my gnome guide. And I've already had them pretending I'm you or something. And so I do so with just this pleasant invitation in the heart. And if I'm there meditating and I have the invitation in my heart to meet my gnome guide, and if I'm there and I'm like, there's nothing. You know what the best thing to do is say, perfect, in your, in your energy, perfect. What is the quality of this nothing? My gnome guide is here to serve me benevolently without any credit, without any need. So why is this gnome guide showing me a nothing? What is this nothing? Is it peaceful? Is it a fertile void? Or is it actually a, a color or a sound or something that I could identify? Say yes to it and lean into it. That's how manifestation happens. That's how fantastical imaginal and imaginal doesn't mean fake or bad imaginal means imagery experiences of the creative mind of the intuitive mind that's how it happens we have to be in the affirmation of the allowance and that allowance has to be of the self so we have to say yes to the experience that we're having that it is the one we called in two as we meditate we want to be in nature we want to be bringing our awareness our attention to the element of earth. So if you want to be sitting on the dirt and leaning against the tree the way that I was, because trees are sort of, um, well, they're like kind of archangelics type of overarching energy with the nature spirit realm, but they have a lot of connection with the earth because they are grounded and they are grounding. And it is actually gnomes who oversee the root system and the branch system of the trees as well as other. Anyway, I'm getting into a whole thing. So anyway, uh, be in nature. That is a great way to do it. Now, if it's uh, 1,000 degrees below zero or 1,000 degrees above zero temperature-wise where you are, then you can be there with your awareness. I have a nice wood table here. I can be there with my awareness. Do what you can to get proximate to nature physically, sure, but also, but m more importantly, mentally and emotionally. In your spirit, be with nature. And so be with nature and particularly be with the element of earth. So what does earth communicate to you? What do you think of? What do you smell? What do you, what do you, uh, what is the imagery that pops in when you are thinking of earth, when you're thinking of maybe it is dirt, maybe it's the smell of the grass because that's a, a offshoot from the earth. Maybe what is it with stones? Do you have some special grounding crystals that you would love to use? So that's, you know, some other ways you could be inside or, you, you know, salt is a mineral. I have a salt lamp here. That's what I'm doing here. You could actually have some salt and put it around you to be able to channel, to grid yourself, to channel that earth element. And third, I will say just be in the attitude that is peaceful, that is grounded, that is balanced. See, if we're moving fast, we're moving too slow, and we and we are kind of stubbornly or willfully doing that, then and, and expecting a, a spirit or an entity or a guide to come and find us there, then we're going to be a little bit left there because we are not actually 
softening our energy and accepting ourselves. Spirit comes in with exception. Now we have grace and we have so much love available to us, but if we are activating a frequency of rejection of ourself, well, then that's a rejection of everything too. So that's why it clogs our filter and it creates more illusion because rejecting the self is an illusion. It's not truly possible to reject the self because your soul is creating you right now and you are your soul. Okay. Well, that's what I wanted to tell you about the gnomes and um, how to connect with that earth element. I will tell you one more thing as a hypnotherapist and as an intuitive guide and coach and as an empathic channel, working with people, whether they are students or they are my one-on-one -on -one, um, you know, clients, that archetypes are powerful. And so that's what the and elemental archetypes are powerful. So the elemental images are um, archetypal. So you may also, like if you're into astrology, those are archetypes. If you are into numerology, numbers are also archetypes. Anything that you might be interested in as a system, they are archetypes that help us to focus and to understand that flow of the soul like becoming human, that Christ consciousness flow. Christ consciousness is spirit becoming human or the embodiment, the integration, the creation process. So archetypes, regardless of your spiritual, mystical, religious orientation, I don't even want to say belief because I don't even like to, I don't like to arrest myself and put myself in the prison of belief if I can help it. I like to let beliefs be the tools that I use to help me stay organized. And so anyway, that's what gnomes and other nature spirits and angels or anything, they are archetypal. The way that we we look at them the way we connect into them helps us to focus and helps us to be inspired beyond now i'm not saying they're not real they are real but our connection to them is archetypal and i'll tell you that on the other side of my archetype of my image of archangel michael or of my gnome guide henry is a vast universe unto itself and so it or they are real a thousand percent and i i mean that you know, in the in the hilarious nonsensical sense that it is, because things can only be 100%. I'm saying it's beyond the 100%. It is a universal sense that my senses, my um, my mind can't totally comprehend, but my spirit can sense it. And so we can use the portals of those archetypes to be in that vast, eternal land of inspiration, creativity, support, focus, awareness, creation. Oh, flow, all of the things, and yet stay open, stay open so that, I don't know, the next thing I know, who knows, I, I never believed in gnomes before, I'd never experienced, better than I believed, let's say, I never experienced gnomes before, but I didn't have a, I didn't have a problem experience, and I didn't have some kind of blockage, so then it naturally happened in a crazy, for me, crazy evidential way. So work with archetypes, and that's one thing that you can do is allow them to be this kind of paradox of real, and yet I don't know if they're real. Because however real they are to me, that's still just a representation of an endless, an endless, vast universe. Work with your archetypes, work with the elements, work with anything else, symbology, anything that is mythical, because myths are so helpful to us. They are creative anchors and activators so just have fun with it and, and to whatever degree you want to have a belief that they are 100 percent real also have the playfulness in your heart that there is so much more and by the way whatever guides or entities or spirits of benevolence that you connect with are reflecting back to you the true frequency of your soul that's why it feels good that's why it feels good it feels good because it is true for you, true about your soul, true about yourself. That's what resonance is. All right, guys, I'm going to also post down below a link to a meditation that I created uh, to be able to connect with either an animal or an, a nature spirit guide. It's a, it's a short meditation and it, you actually what you can do is I'm going to post up there also the link to the free mini course on my website with, um, you know, about animal communication, how to connect with your own animal. So I have a, a free mini course and I have a free meditation. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here with me, for liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, 
And most importantly, thank you for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Thank you.